What is going on? Nick here for another Cinema 4D tutorial. And today I'm going to be covering the attractor um, inside Cinema 4D and how you can use this attractor to create um, animations and such. So I created a quick little scene here. If I go ahead and click play, uh, we got all our spheres here. And as you click play, they all come and they crowd around this sphere. We render it out and they all get attracted to the attractor object. So this is fairly simple. You can use this in uh, multiple different ways. You can attract or you can um, not attract but you can animate the position of the attractor so it can move. Um, you can do a bunch of bunch of stuff like if I made the attractor a child of our sphere when I move our sphere now all of the um, spheres are following the attractor and as I move this around they're, they're they're always trying to get to that that position where the attractor is inside so I'll go ahead and I'll show you how to make this and um, super easy super simple we'll hop right in here to a new file and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a sphere because spheres are the best for attractors I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so this is our one sphere this is gonna be our sphere for the attractor so I'm just going to name that A for tractor, nice and simple. And I'm just going to make this uh, <clears throat> 300, so it's much bigger than all our other spheres. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit. The next thing we want is a second sphere, so we'll go ahead and add a second sphere. And I'm going to make this to about 50 in size. And we can change the size after. but. Now what we're going to want to do is come into MoGraph and we want to get a cloner object. So I'm going to drop our little sphere into our cloner and I'm just going to set it to uh, grid array, space these out so that they're not intersecting, put about four on each and I'm just going to lower that down a little bit. So. Now we have our um, cloner and our sphere for our retractor. For our little spheres, I'm just going to uh, change it up a little bit and I'm going to throw a random effector, so under MoGraph effectors and random. And I'm just going to check, uncheck the position and check the scale box under parameters. And I'm just going to go uniform scale and I'm going to set this to uh, let's go 1.5 and then just gonna throw a camera in there so then what that's gonna do is it's gonna make our spheres all these different sizes uh, that is a little big so I'm gonna drop this down now I'm gonna do 1.5 and then I'm gonna actually change the size of our normal sphere to about uh, 35 so that we get this good variation between really big and really small and nothing is intersecting because we do have to throw a rigid body on this and if our spheres are intersecting they will just explode and go flying everywhere alright so we got our sphere here for our attractor we got our cloner object and everything's looking good so far so the first thing that we want to do is since this big sphere is our attractor we don't want these spheres to be able to pass through it so I'm gonna add a col collider tag to our big sphere by right clicking simulation tags collider because if you put a rigid body tag on this big sphere when we hit play it's just gonna fall and we don't want that so we'll just put collider and then on our cloner simulation tags rigid body so now those are gonna fall all the way down but 
one thing that we need to keep in mind is if I throw a floor in here and I put a collider tag on the floor when I hit play this cloner acts as a single object and we don't want that we want all these little individual spheres to fall as their own objects so come under the cloner and go to um, dynamics body and we'll scroll down to where it says collision individual elements just turn that to all and now when we hit play all of our little clones inside of our cloner are its is its own object so now we got that we need our cloner so the cloner is actually under the simulate tab and under particles so we'll just grab an attractor and now wherever this object is is where the spheres are gonna try to go so we want to put that in the exact middle of our sphere so I'm just gonna drag this up and I'm just gonna put it right there so it's right on the middle of our sphere and now we're good and I hit play and everything fails miserably alright so the reason that we're not getting our desired effect is because the strength on our effector is very low you need to crank this up to like 200,000 and then when we hit play it sucks them all up 200,000 is a little aggressive so I'm gonna go down to 100,000 and that's more gradual and not so aggressive I believe you can change this speed limit too to stop them from going too crazy like if I just drastically drop this down to like that's 10,000 I think they just move a little bit slower but I'm just gonna make this timeline a little bit longer but th this is the effect that we want now when we hit play all of our spheres are trying to get to the attractor but they can't because there's a collider object in the way so they move around the sphere acting like the sphere itself is the attractor and if we were saying like before if I um, drop the attractor as a child of the sphere now if we hit play we can animate the sphere back and forth uh, up and down you can throw throw it all but and everything is, is always gonna try to stay at the attractor so that's a cool little thing that you can do for animating if you're too aggressive with it you do it does throw uh, all of these spheres off <clears throat> so I'm just gonna hit play let all these come here now when I render we get this beautiful scene we'll add some uh, fancy little lighting to it quickly the easiest way to get nice lighting in my opinion is just throw a physical sky in there come into the render settings I'm just gonna turn the anti-aliasing to best I'm gonna grab ambient occlusion and global illumination I'm not even gonna touch the settings we go ahead and render this out it already looks a thousand times better and we don't even have a single material object in our scene I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a few I'm gonna make one for our spheres and one for our object I'm just gonna do a flat pure white one <clears throat> for our attractor sphere and for our little spheres let's make a what do what we got here? Let's make a kind of a brightish green with a nice reflection. I'm gonna come into the reflectance. I'm gonna remove the layers that are there. I'm gonna add a Beckman. And under this attenuation, just go additive so that it adds this reflection layer to the color. And I'm just gonna lower down the specular to zero. I'm going to lower down the reflection to about 
40 and I'm just going to bring up the roughness a little bit to about 10 to 15 some places between there and we'll exit that out we'll throw the green on our cloner object and we got the white for our attractor object we go ahead and render this out it's fairly quick there's a couple little things that you can do to speed up global illumination but now we got this it's uh, the lighting is very nice it's good for uh, rendering and actually if you want to speed up your render a little bit um, under the options tag I'm just gonna turn the ray threshold 3% and then for global illumination, I'm just going to turn the gamma to 2.2. Renders a little bit faster, not overly, but <clears throat> it's always nice. So yeah, so that's a interesting little thing that you can do with the attractor. You can use um, whatever objects you want, really, for this attractor. Let's say I threw a cube in there. I'll throw a little fillet on it. I'll drop that down. I'll change this to like 50 by 50 by 50. It's a little small. I'll do 100 by 100 by 100. I can drop that into the, the cloner object as well. Those cubes are pretty big, so I'll do 75 by 75. Just throw a pyramid in there. 100 by 100 by 100. A little pyramid in there too. So, and under your cloner, as long as your clones are on iterate, it just takes whatever is under it and it adds it in in sequence. So it's going to add one sphere, one cube, one pyramid. One sphere, one cube, one pyramid. And your clones, you can set it to random, so there's a random amount of each. You can set it to blend, so it blends them all. I'm just going to keep it on iterate. If I hit play, now we got all of these uh, crazy little shapes trying to get to our um, our sphere. Go ahead and render that out. It's taking a little bit longer because it's tightly clustered there, but you can see you can easily add whatever shape you want to to this um, this scene it works the exact same so if I go and I grab our our sphere everything still tries to stay on it no matter what shape they are um, whatever you you can even add platonics toss a platonic in there they are very big so we'll just lower that down to like 50 yeah uh, we'll do 40 I'm gonna change this to a darker red but yeah so this is a super nice easy way that you can go about um, creating very nice a nice little animation you can do uh, nice little scenes like this it's super easy all you need is some simulation tags and <clears throat> the attractor object and you are good to go and it is very easy to animate this whole thing let's throw our sphere back here position let's throw it halfway we'll throw it there and we'll throw it here so now that we got a little bit of an animation going a lot of them don't uh, get moved up because our attractor strength is a little low so I'll add some more strength and now that even though that's moving it still brings most of them with it alright guys so that was just a short little tutorial on the attractor object with inside Cinema 4D and how you can use it to make some uh, nice little animations or some scenes or whatever you want to do with it but yeah guys hope you enjoyed and um, also if you liked the speed arts that I put out 
uh, leave a comment in the section below letting me know if you want more of those or if you just want tutorials. Alright guys, I'll see, talk to you guys soon.